Okay, let me see what the charts look like this weekend. Friday looks pretty good. Hold on, let me see what Astrospheric looks like. Friday and Saturday look pretty good? Wait a minute, what about clear sky chart? The whole weekend is clear? Hi there, my name's Dalen. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there, all to help you escape the day to day and image the night. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching this video, please do consider giving this one a like. Now, the reason I jumped in here before we get into the rest of the video is that when I recorded this video, I recorded it on my action camera and used the microphone I'm currently using. Now this thing is actually very terrible at handling external microphones and I didn't realize it until I got home. The sound is very muffled and no matter what I did, it just got worse. So I'm leaving the audio alone and just running with it. Lesson learned, this thing will only be for video from now on and I will use my regular camera for audio. And the reason I didn't use the regular camera for audio is well, you'll see as soon as uh, you get into the rest of it. I do apologize for the bad audio, but you know, lesson learned, it'll never happen again. And I hope you do enjoy this video. Whew. Finally made it. So I still had to go to work. And unfortunately the charts changed just a little bit, but it's not too bad. I mean, if you look around, nothing crazy, but Speaking of crazy, I may have went a little bit crazy because last time I tried to come out here and do the multiple images in one night, I did get clouded out. But because those charts look so good, I may be a little bit insane. I have the usual setup, which is the HEQ5 Pro with the Xenostar 61 and the ASI 294 MC Pro on it. And I'm gonna be using the Optolong L Enhanced filter. And of course, this is with the ASI Air Pro controlling everything, but we're gonna be doing five minute shots on the Eastern Veil Nebula. Another thing tonight also going for a spin is the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i. I've had this thing since like April and I haven't gotten a chance to use it yet because of all the smoke and cloudy nights and just, you know, the weather just not cooperating this year. On that is the Canon T7i with the Rokinon 135 millimeter lens, which is also a lens I haven't used tonight. So you get to watch a first light, which is kind of cool. And I'm not using any filters because the main filters I have are already being used. Uh, what we're gonna do is put that on the whole Veil Nebula complex and we'll just see how it turns out. I'm thinking because it's gonna be unguided, it's probably only gonna be like a minute or two shot. And lastly, the other insane part is I have a new little cell phone mount for my Dodsonian, so I'm gonna take a shot at the planet. I got a few chance to play around with it in the backyard and it works out okay, but I haven't taken a real serious try yet. Saturn reaches Zenith at around 10.30ish and I'm hoping that I'm done messing with the Star Adventure by then so that way I can get that set up and uh, get some shots of Saturn. And then about an hour later, Jupiter hits Zenith as well. So it's a good time frame uh, if you're wondering to image the planets is when they're roughly around Zenith. And it's even better if they're at opposition and at Zenith at the same time. So, uh, so with this weekend being an absolutely clear weekend, tonight is the imaging night and tomorrow is actually a star party at the other observatory. So I will be down there for that. So there won't be any processing tips in this video. What you're gonna see is the finished product uh, towards the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. All right, so I do want to talk a little bit about the uh, cell phone mount that I got and the new eyepiece. So with this Dobsonian, I pretty much only have the eyepieces that come with it. Um, so the 30 millimeter and the nine millimeter that comes with it. And while they're fine, uh, the nine mil, the eye relief on it, so that's uh, in the uh, field of view, it's so tiny that lining up a cell phone is a huge pain. But if you look at this eyepiece here, this is a six millimeter, and this is the SV Boney that you can buy on Amazon for like 35 bucks. The field of view on this thing is huge, or at least uh, makes it easier for lining up a cell phone camera. And then the mount itself is the Celestron one. And this thing is pretty slick. It pull out here, so it cinches the cell phone. And then you can, uh, raise and lower it like that, get it closer or farther away from the eyepiece, and then uh, up and down and side to side. 
also for any outreach efforts, uh, like star parties or anything like that, if somebody is like, hey, I want to take a picture of the moon, then using that cell phone mount would actually be a really good one to go with. Because uh, it's nice and sturdy. Uh, you trust that it's not going to fall off the telescope or the eyepiece. And the other thing I forgot to mention too is the clamp here that actually works with it. So a little thumb release here and uh, this knob uh, loosens up and uh, tightens up so that way it stays nice and clamped. That way if you're at a star party, uh, the phone won't fall and it'll just uh, create an awesome view for whoever wants a picture of the moon on their phone. Alright, here we go. A little bit later than intended. Uh, I wanted to do this at 10.30, but it's almost 11. Um, but here we go, Saturn. So, I got it all in focused. Uh, the current settings are uh, ISO 200. Uh, the shutter speed is at 1 over 50. And uh, the camera itself is set to uh, 1 to 1 in 1400 by 1400. That's about the shallowest I guess resolution I can set it to you don't want to do like 4k because then the pixels um, you're not going to get as much out of it but the way to do that with this is see how it's starting to go out of frame just pause and then scoot it over and then as soon as it comes back in frame do it again and just do that about uh, three four times get a get at least three minutes And while this is going on, it is at 30 FPS. That's the highest uh, speed I can set it to, uh, putting it at one to one on this phone, but yeah, that's fine. And uh, while Saturn coasts across the screen there, this is at 200 times magnification. And we'll let this one go, and maybe one more after that. But beyond that, you only need about a couple minutes. That's plenty of frames to work with to play around with it. And I did digitally zoom it here a little bit, and I'll show you that and you can see a little bit of it. It's still kind of blurry because it is a cell phone, but it looks pretty cool. Okay, so we should be fine with the Saturn images there. I probably got, what, three minutes worth? And uh, just as I got to the end of this, the main scope started doing its meridian flip, so I had to go pay attention to that. So I'm gonna go make sure no cables are snagged and we'll go over to Jupiter. All right, so we're back on Jupiter and uh, this time the setting is the ISO is 50 and the shutter speed is one over 90. And I did that just to get a little bit of the shadow in the background, but it's also not blown out. I mean, you can even see the stripes at this, uh, <laughs> at this shutter speed, um, but it is still one to one. And man, that looks that looks amazing just looking at the phone. I can't wait to put this on the computer screen. But we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna let it get to the edge, pause it, reset, and do that about three or four times. Now, because of the way that PIP, Auto Stacker, and uh, Registax, the, the processing behind this works, if you notice that I'm not exactly putting it back in the same spot, that doesn't really matter because it's gonna stack all the frames and crop out a lot of the dark anyway. So I have taken things about as far as I can with uh, the DAUB and the cell phone. So a little update on the Skywatcher Star Adventure. I had some problems with it. Even 10 second images were streaking. And a quick Google search said that there might be something going on with the gears. I'm going to play around with it and see if I can get it going to where the stars are sharp for more than 10 seconds. You'll see it popping up on screen if I figured it out or not. But uh, beyond that, all I have left to do is some visual. Uh, there's a big group of Messier objects I want to take a look at and um, beyond that I'm just waiting on the main scope to do the Eastern Veil Nebula. So uh, beyond that uh, here are the images I acquired. Now the Eastern Veil Nebula might be uh, not complete. I might actually go back and reprocess it later because of learning a few things uh, with PixInsight. But beyond that enjoy the images. Uh, 
If you enjoyed this video, please do like, comment, and maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.